Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be a little bit different because I'm not going to be the only one filming. So it's going to be me, my friend Caitlin, and my friend Stacy because you guys have been asking me to do a video on the top five uh, beginner snakes. And I'm going to do the top three and then also rate what I think the top five would be. And I'm going to have my friends help me out too because I actually don't own a ball python and that has to be on the list for beginners. So I also don't have a milk snake, so my friends Stacy and Caitlin are also going to help out with this video and you're going to get to hear about their point of views and how everything works with their snakes too. So I will be covering the corn snake section because I have a corn snake. So this is Bloom, my little plasma corn snake. And here he is. He's still very tiny. I've only had him since like last January, so he's still pretty young. So this is him. And let's get started. So I personally think that corn snakes are the ultimate beginner snake for anyone that's looking into getting a snake but has no experience with them. Um, some of my reasons include just their size because they're really, really small as hatchlings, obviously, but they also don't get as big as they grow into being adults either. So they're going to get to be about like four or five feet, which sounds really big, but for a snake that really isn't very long at all. And corn snakes actually don't get very thick either. They're very thin snakes compared to like pythons. Another thing that is amazing about corn snakes that makes them so easy to own is the fact that these snakes are great eaters. They're really not known to turn down a meal. There can be a lot of issues with ball pythons going off of feedings and such like that. But you aren't really going to run into that problem with a corn snake. So it makes it a lot easier to own them and you know that your animal is healthy and you don't have to deal with any of those issues. Another great thing about corn snakes is that they're really good with handling. So Bloom is kind of just chilling now. They can be a little bit fast as babies and they may want to be a little like crazy and get away from you. And they can be a little flighty but... Over time, they get really used to handling and they do really, really well. So I think that these are great animals for handling. They do not bite ever. I mean, I'm sure there are some corn snakes. Every animal's different, but I've never met a aggressive, really defensive corn snake. If anything, they'll just want to get away from you and just be fast, but they do not bite. Another thing that's really amazing about corn snakes is their ease of care when setting up an enclosure. You're just going to need a heat pad that will reach 85 degrees as the hot spot on one side of the enclosure with a hide. And then you're going to want a cool hide as well and to provide a water bowl for these guys to help with their shedding and so they could get something to drink. Um, I use Aspen for the substrate and it works perfectly for Bloom. And that's about it. You want to make sure that obviously you have something so that way they can't escape. Like a really secure lid. You don't want anything that can uh, potentially get opened so that way these guys escape because they are escape artists. There have been a lot of people that have lost corn snakes in their houses. So it's just something to keep in mind when owning one of these guys. So when owning a corn snake, you're typically going to feed them once a week. I always pick Wednesdays, that's the feeding day for all of my snakes, so I feed Bloom every Wednesday. So corn snakes are known to live to be up into their 20s, so you are going to have this snake for a very, very long time. It's something to keep in mind if you're looking to get a snake, especially a corn snake. Some cons to owning a corn snake may be the possibility that some people may find them to be a little too flighty, especially as babies. They're very delicate too, so you got to be careful with them. But other than that, I really can't think of many cons for them. I think that they're just like the ultimate beginner snake for someone that wants a snake and doesn't have much experience with them. So something that makes corn snakes unique is all of the different morphs that they come in. There are so many varieties of colors and patterns for these guys. As I said earlier, Bloom happens to be a plasma, which is a lavender and I believe sunkissed cross. So he's very gorgeous. I can't wait to see how he develops as an adult, but I absolutely love him. I think he's so beautiful and makes me want to get more corn snakes because there are so many different colors. So now I'm just going to rank the top five snakes in the order that I think best fits them for if you're a new person with snakes and you've never owned one before. This is the order that I personally, based on my experience, would put them in order as. So one will be the number one best beginner snake and then I'll go down the list to five. So one would be corn snakes for me. I think that they're just the ultimate best first snake for anyone to get. Number two, I would have to say king snakes. I feel like they, from what I've experienced with them, they're very docile. They're very easy to take care of. 
The only thing that I don't really like about them is the um, idea that they musk. So that's pretty much the only con that I have for kink snakes. Three would have to be milk snakes. I think that they can be very flighty and they move in a very different, unique way that I'm not very familiar with. I'm not really a colubrid person. That's why I kind of lean towards boas. But I think that they're very easy to take care of and they're gorgeous animals. So they'll definitely be number three. Number four, I would have to say a sand boa because they're so small. They stay small. Um, they don't really do much. You don't see them very often. They like to just burrow all the time. So they aren't that entertaining, but very easy to take care of. So they'll be number four. And then number five would be the ball python. I personally don't really like ball pythons. I think the morphs are gorgeous and it's very cool, but I don't like their personalities very much. I personally find ball pythons to be way too timid and not very trusting. It's very rare for me to find a ball python that isn't striking at me. And I know everyone says ball pythons are chill, they just sit in a ball. But that's not chill, they're sitting in a ball because they're afraid of everything. And when they do come out, they're usually striking because they're scared and they're trying to defend themselves. And that's not very relaxing for me and I don't really enjoy that type of behavior. So I don't really like ball pythons that much. And they tend to go off of feeding a lot too, which is really stressful, so... I just, I don't know, I'm not really a ball python fan, I'm sorry guys. But that's why Stacy's going to cover that section, and because I don't want to be super biased in this video, and I know there's a lot of ball pythons lovers, so I definitely need someone else's opinion on that side. And I'm also not really that experienced with them, and the little experiences that I have had have been kind of negative with ball pythons. So yeah. I hope that you guys can get some positive reinforcement from Stacy. So that's all for me and Bloom. Um, he kind of had a little bit of a rough shed because I just moved him back into his usual enclosure. I just had a mite situation with him, so he's totally clean again now, but we're working on getting that uh, shed off. So if you're gonna yell at me in the comments, just know that it was just because I moved him to a different enclosure and I was working on getting mites off of him. But uh, hopefully we'll get that back under control and Hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Let me know what you think about adding other people to the video so that we can get other people's opinions on these matters. And I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you so much for watching. What's up everyone? I'm Caitlin and this is Shere Khan. He is a hypotandrine hunter and milk snake. These guys make great beginner pets because, well for one thing, they can be kind of flighty. But you know, just it's once you take them out of their take, it takes them a while to chill out, and once you're holding them, they're fine after a while. Um, but they definitely are timid as juveniles. It just takes some work and progress with them, just as any other snake. Uh, one great thing about these guys is they're notorious for being excellent eaters. So, uh, as you may know, s some people have problems with uh, snakes like pythons. They get stressed out with lots of handling or moving if you first purchase them and they might not eat for you right away. These guys will never turn down a meal, I swear. The second I brought him home, he ate right away. He was perfectly fine. Very comfortable in his house. Um, so yeah, that's one nice thing about these is you'll never have to worry about them starving themselves because they'll basically never turn down a meal. Oh yeah, so with feeding them, with uh, juveniles, you should feed them about every 7 to 10 days. Um, adults every 10 to 14 days, or if you see them hunting, if they're hungry, if they look hungry, then you probably should feed them. So these guys, uh, he's a Honduran, so Honduran milk snakes is one of the larger subspecies of milk snakes. They can reach up to about 5 feet in length. For their setup, for juveniles, a 10 or 15 gallon tank is pretty good for them. Uh, you should have an undertake heater for them, and the, the hot side of the tank should reach up to temperatures to like 80, 80 degrees and up, and then the lower side, the cooler side of the tank should be like 78 to 82 degrees, and then nighttime temperatures can drop down to about 70 or a little bit lower, but it shouldn't, yeah, shouldn't go past that. Oh, as far as the setup, they should have a hide. Um, you can use aspen or I use the is it rep, rep the bark, rep the bark. I don't know how you pronounce it. The wood chips. That stuff's good for them. Uh, they, they do like to climb, so I'd recommend branches and stuff for them. Obviously a water bowl 
you know, because they have to drink water like everyone else. A milk snake's lifespan is approximately 10 to 12 years old. If I were to rate the top best beginner snakes for number one, I'd probably say a corn snake. For number two, I'd, I'd put python. And the reason why I put python before milk snakes is mostly because they're a lot calmer and less active than these guys, and they're less timid. So they don't move around as much. And for people that are still adjusting to getting used to handling a snake, they might not like how flighty these guys are because it's a little nerve-wracking. So a python is a better fit for someone that's still not used to them yet. Um, for number three, I put milk snake. Uh, number four, I chose king snake. There's a lot of controversy about king snakes um, as being good beginner snakes. I personally think that they're quite nippy snakes and I, I wouldn't recommend them for someone getting them as a first time. I don't know, they're just, they seem a bit more territorial and they are a bit nippy so I definitely wouldn't recommend them. And for five I put boa. These guys have extremely scary teeth. So if you were to get bit, um, it wouldn't be fun for your first time. <laughs> Which is why I put on number five and also the fact that they, uh, they're a little more feisty than the rest of them and uh, timid, so it takes a while for them to get used to you. You kind of really have to know what you're doing, otherwise you would probably most likely make the wrong move and scare them and they might go to snap at you and then it might kill your, your joy of snakes for the rest of your life, so you don't want to do that. So yeah, corn snakes are like these guys, which is why I put them on number one, but they're not as active as them and I've been told that they are a bit more sweeter. I've heard I've heard multiple things about corn s or milk snakes. I've heard that people have problems with them biting them or that they're just musking on them and he's never done any of that to me. He's never tried to bite me. He's never musked on me before so I'm, I'm not sure. I got him in March. He's definitely grown a decent size. I, I'm trying to get him the camera for you. everyone so it's me again um, I was gonna have Stacy film the ball python section but due to some technological issues it's not gonna be happening so I'm gonna be doing that part for her and I'm gonna try my very best not to be biased I'm gonna give you all the information that I have based upon my experiences with ball pythons and hopefully you'll be able to make your decision based off of that so this is my ball python dude just kidding. So for the question of why are ball pythons such great beginner snakes, I think that the main reason that people love ball pythons and they're so popular is basically because those snakes are very, very shy and timid snakes. Usually when a snake wants to defend itself, they're known to just typically bite right off the bat. But ball pythons really don't react that way. They usually ball up and they just want to shy away and get away from people. So that's why they're called a ball python. Yeah, their main defense is basically to ball up and get away. And for a beginner, that can be really great because colubrids like to move a lot and that can be a little weird and uncomfortable for someone that's new around snakes and they may not enjoy that type of behavior. So to have something that is kind of chill and literally just sits there, it's a little bit more comforting. When ball pythons do come out of their ball, they're also kind of very slow moving snakes. Boas are like known to just keep going and keep going and they like to move a lot, but ball pythons aren't really like that. They'll like stick their head up and look around and be a little curious, but they typically don't really move around very fast at all. So when it comes to eating for ball pythons, that's kind of the main con for that type of a snake just because they are known to go off of feeding, and that can be really, really difficult for a beginner. So if it's your first time owning a snake and you just got this ball python, it can be kind of difficult and confusing if your snake isn't eating and you'll be very worried and concerned as if maybe you're doing something wrong because snakes can go off of feeding if their enclosures aren't really right, or the temperature isn't right, the humidity isn't right. But if all of those things are correct, there's still a chance that the ball python won't eat. And that can be really stressful. People may bring their animals to vets, which is very expensive. But um, there may be nothing wrong with your snake. That's just a behavior that they are known to do. And sometimes it's kind of rough because ball pythons, in order to get them back on feeding, you may have to feed them a live rat or mouse. And for a beginner, they may not be comfortable with doing something like that. So it's just something to keep in mind. It's all information that's needed because I feel like it's not discussed as often and people are always just saying how great ball pythons are. 
but in situations like that it can be a little overwhelming for a beginner and they may just want to get rid of their snake entirely. So when it comes to ball python size they're usually four to six feet as adults and the females do get larger than the males. They're pretty thick bodied snakes too, so the colubrids are always way skinnier, the pythons do get a little bit fatter. So when it comes to setting up an enclosure for a ball python, as an adult you're gonna want at least a 30 to 40 gallon tank for them. Um, you don't have to use a tank for ball pythons, you can also do the rack system, but I personally prefer tanks and setting up naturalistic enclosures. Um, it's totally up to you, both do the job, but it's also important to keep in mind that you're going to need a light cycle. They need to know when it's day and when it's night. It's good for their overall health. They need to know that so that way they can act and behave accordingly and know when it's time to eat and just, it just helps them with their psychological health because if you didn't know if it was night or day, you'd be all over the place and crazy too. So also when setting up a ball python enclosure, it's pretty typical, just like all the other snakes, you're going to need a heating pad. These snakes, a lot of the time you'll see in pet stores, have um, above the tank heating, and that actually stresses them out. It's better to use a heating pad because they need that belly heat in order to digest their food. So again, you're going to want that heating pad on one side of the enclosure, the other side should be cooler and you're gonna need a very large water bowl for these guys. They need to be able to soak their entire body. You don't want it to be too deep because they can drown, but you do want them to have something that they can soak their entire body in, so that way it can help them with sheds. You are also gonna want a cool hide on the other side of the enclosure too, and the cool end because they need to be able to thermoregulate. There are a ton of different substrates you can use for ball pythons, it's totally up to you. You can use aspen, repti bark, some people just use paper towels or just newspapers, totally up to you. So for the hot spot, you want it to be at least 88 to 96 degrees and then the ambient temperature you want to be 78 to 80 degrees. You never want to fall below 75 degrees for ball pythons. They do require a little bit more heat than other snakes that I'm used to but it's just something to check up on and make sure that you have accurate for your ball python enclosure. Ball pythons do live 20 to 30 years so it's a very very big commitment. If you are planning to get a snake you should plan to have it for its entire lifespan. So something that makes ball pythons stand out and unique among all the other beginner snakes is their variety in morphs. If you go to a reptile show or something, you're going to see ball pythons everywhere. There are so many different patterns and colors and they are gorgeous. They're so amazing to look at. It's going to make you want to just collect all of them. It's so awesome. So I think that's what really makes them stand out and that's what gets people really hooked on these guys. So I hope that this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed the video. Please leave a comment. Let me know what you think the best beginner snake is and let me know about your experiences with snakes because I love to read them. Have a wonderful day.